Yeah. Like I say, I'll uh, change I my number. <laughs> uh -huh. I've got some gray here. Uh -huh. <laughs> I lost it all up here. That's what you do. Your hair. Your trim's laughing. I know. Yeah, it's surprising when we get all the things that happen. Yeah. My stepson said something about that one day. He's like, boy, you know, getting old. So I mean, we just put that on there. I don't want to get all of that right. Why not? It's just because you and the inner ear. I mean, you might be best for it. Of course, he's looking right at me, right? Yeah. You know, Calvin Crothers always said, old lady, you're not resisting. I agree, sir. It's not. Uh-uh. No, it's not. I just want to clarify that it's independent of the city and the inner ear. I agree. I think, I don't want, we've got to be beyond reproach. I know, I don't want SGM. Because of the issues, right? So I agree. I want an independent uh, city in inner cities. That's why I just want to add that simple little thing. That's fine. Okay. <coughs> it's so hard to read through these things and see what was changed from the one before you end up the one.
snare. But we far. Did you get that? That was great. I don't. You're a little All right, I'm getting called to order. Public comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jeff Fox here. I reside in, in the city of Salida. Um, I noticed that the administrator and the secretary of the NRCDC uh, has brought in a new contract. That's, quote, hot off the presses. I can only assume that she spent some significant portion of her time in the last month and indeed in the last four or five years working on the Vandeveer Ranch. As a council issue, let's stick to the, stick to the NRC business. All right, sir. Is the NRC paying the city of, of Salida for Ms. McDonald's and Mr. Osborne's time? No. Okay. So and so the city's paying for that. We are salaried employees. The city pays our paycheck. Yes. If that's the case, why is the chairman of the NRC uh, of the NRC getting up and complaining about putting the finances of this cor corporation under the city's budget? Are you talking about me? Yeah. What, what, what's your what's your give me your point again? I what, when I I didn't complain. Were you talking about when I went to the audit? Maybe? Uh, yes, you, I you spoke up. The, I, I spoke up, I had a couple questions. What's your point? So the chairman of the NRC is fine with putting the finances of this, this corporation under the city's budget. I never said that. I asked a couple questions. That's so me. you're not fine with that? I, I don't have an opinion on it one way or the other yet. Huh? I don't have an opinion on it one way or the other yet, Jeff. What, what's your Why point, Jeff? words in his mouth? Cut to the chase. What, what, you, what, what, what do you really want to ask me? That's what I want to ask. I don't have an opinion on it yet. And I would also ask that you tell staff not to interrupt. Um, the second issue is this. Why aren't you guys looking at affordable housing on the three empty lots that are sitting over there by the Forest Service. I think we're looking at affordable housing all over this town, Jeff. It's not, believe me, it's not an issue that's gonna be solved. So have there fact, been- Excuse me, it's not an issue that's gonna be solved by 48 units right out of the gate. You know, it's gonna take, you know, possibly hundreds of units as we continue to grow as a town. So we will consider those spots. Have you considered them to date? I, I wouldn't say particularly for affordable housing. They're available. They're available? They're available. Well, this is only one available lot, right? There's only one, one lot over there. Correct. That's lot four. Mm -hmm. So why can't we do that? Why, why can't Belmont work over there? Well, they, they chose the lot they wanted. It's pretty simple. I think the idea is that we have a master plan that's going to right. place all of the residential on the east side of Highway 50, and it would be most appropriate to put housing with future housing rather than, on, or I'm sorry, on the west side, instead of rather on the east side, where it's intended to be more of a business park campus style, um, instead of forcing them further out of town and further away from the services that they need, it's better typically from a planning standpoint to bring them closer in, and the Van de Beer property where they're located suits, serves that. Need. All right, thank you, sir. Um, you do realize that that's millions of dollars of city money that, that bought that land, right? Right. All right. 
and the city received the city has the water in return for that we don't, city we don't, paid we don't, we don't, ten ten dollars for the water we don't get any money on the money that the city makes off of the water every year we get nothing we get none of that <coughs> All right, Mr. Kitson, thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I'd just like everybody on the board to know that Dan Tibbetts has a family emergency. Oh, that's okay. Not me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everyone's okay? All right. Approval of minutes. Somebody want to approve the minutes? Thank you for the minutes, Don. Thank you for the minutes, Don. So we can't approve the minutes. We'll table that till next meeting. Treasury report? There is no updated treasury report yet. This one. All right. You know, like the numbers we need. Moving right along, then. Resolution 21604, contract to buy sell property with Lowry. Let's okay. do this. Dara, I'm going to let you take the lead here. Sure. Um, so I think everyone is aware of the contract that we've been working on, um, some various iterations of that in recent months and weeks. Um, we met again, um, Jim and Ray and Michael and I, with um, Fred and Larry and Pete Cordova yesterday, and had some changes that came out of that discussion, and have been going back and forth a little bit uh, yesterday, and again this morning. Um, with Pete, uh, between Pete and Michael primarily on hammering out um, some of those differences. So I think um, for now I'll probably turn it over to Michael to walk through the major points um, that have changed since um, the version that you saw uh, a week ago on Monday um, and we can certainly discuss those and what um, questions might still be outstanding at this time. Yeah, I think the, uh, and, and, and you guys will see in it, the, one of the biggest points that we're going to have to, to uh, work through with Lowry and, 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 and Pete Cordova is the, uh, the indemn indemnification uh, agreement. So basically what we put in the contract was we're going to negotiate one within 30 days of signature of the contract, but we don't have one because we're going to have to find terms that are suitable for everyone. Um, and, and what they're looking at is a request to be um, held harmless if, uh, if sued by uh, citizens, of, citizens of Salida um, or other claims that arise out of their subdivision and improvement on the property. And so uh, there's a lot contained in that, so it's going to take some time to, to figure out how we want to, uh, to word that agreement. But that doesn't and preclude us from signing the contract, or it does? It, it doesn't. I mean, they have, we have 30 days from 30 days the, the signature to, uh, to, to come up with an agreement, and then if they don't like the agreement, then they can walk. Um, and, but, and that's the biggest thing, and, and probably going to be the biggest sticking point with actually, you know, having an agreement that goes to, to the end, to the actual transfer. Um, other than that, you know, we, let's see, we discussed the, uh, the, the cost uh, reimbursement. Um, that's substantially the same. Um, let's see what else we got here. Do you address the appraisal stuff, the conflict of the contract, and... and um, exhibit B or Addendum B conflict if one said the buyer would pay, one said the seller would pay. For okay. you, the escrow. I think we corrected that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for like the I'm just seeing all and stuff. Yeah. 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 I caught that yesterday. I think you. Yeah. So you changed it to seller will pay. Yes. Because we're, we we're, are, we are paying. The bank is requiring it. Okay. And in that, we did put in that this agreement is controlling um, for any of those. If there's some of those issues within the contract, um, the agreement, which is is basically what we've been negotiating. Obviously, we've all reviewed the contract and stuff, but but there can be some a term in there like that 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 ends up conflicting. So anything in the uh, this agreement, the attachment B, is what's going to actually control. Okay. And I think that's the that's the, the biggest meat change. of it. I mean, we had some small things like clarifying. Um, yeah, I think it was clear, but we, we actually changed the name of what the, we'll call the subdivision. We were going to call it the Vanderbilt Ranch subdivision. We're going to call it the Lowry subdivision, just to be clear. Um, to, and to clear that their responsibility in terms of subdivision and zoning is really focused on the 40 acres 
that they are trying to purchase. Uh, obviously, to do a subdivision, we'll have to map the whole thing and then break off the, the parcels that they are purchasing, but making sure that they're clear that they're not subdividing, you know, creating a whole master plan in terms of being responsible for the subdivision and zoning. So we added a little bit of language. Um, to clarify that, we talked a little bit um, on the CDOT permit. Um, if a traffic study is required um, by CDOT, then they would pay 20% of the cost and we would pay 80% because again, that traffic study would be for the whole, the impact of the whole master plan in terms of looking at the 104 access. Um, we don't think that's gonna be required, but wanted to address it. Um, I think we stuck pretty much the same on requiring the appraisal and the independent verification of costs. Um, that if the costs do come in uh, for the utilities being lower than the appraisal of the land, then they would have the option to either abandon ship or um, extend the utilities to um, make equity between the value of the land and the cost of the improvements. Um, as far as cost recovery, we added a um, section, so that's K, section K, cost recovery. Added a paragraph there that said we would come up with a detailed um, cost recovery agreement um, within 60 days of. Sorry. Okay, I'll need to recuse myself for this, but I'll participate in the rest of them. Okay, thanks. Okay. Actually, maybe I should interrupt. I guess I want to make sure that because there are utilities going on to the Templar property, uh, if there's any concern that there's a conflict of interest in that, I'll use myself too. I mean, it, I see it as an accommodation because there are already utilities there, but I want to make sure that, you know, there's no question about that. So I don't know what. What is it? You're accusing yourself from what? Well, from voting on the Lowry deal, if there's any concern that there might be a conflict because the utilities are going on to the Pinnabarn property and that's part of the Pinnabarn property. Okay, so I don't know. I mean, I see it as accommodation because I can't build on that that area that's going to be. I don't think that would constitute a conflict of interest. Well, but that's why I'm asking the question. I mean, I just want to make sure there's no question about that. So it's your your part of the pen and run. Yeah, property. I'm a 20 percent owner of the property. So. And then you'd be uh, tapping into those utilities. The Possibly. Extension? I mean, we've got them on the other sides already, so it's a question of whether its additional benefit or not, I guess. And I see it two ways. One, it's an accommodation because I can't build on a, an easement like that. On the other hand, it might be something we could tap into, I don't know. So I just want to make sure. I mean, if there's any question at all, I'll just excuse myself. Yeah, I'd say it's probably in your best interest too. Yeah. Okay, then I'll just, I'll go out with Tim. <laughs> so, right. um, so again, going back to the cost recovery, we would propose a specific agreement um, within 60 days of execution of a contract. Um, then we would have the appraisal in hand um, to sort of be able to um, a little bit more basis um, for the expectations on the timing and percentage of future lot sales that would go to cost recovery versus going to the bank and maintaining our desired minimum balance. Um, so we added that provision. There is a provision um, added, uh, P was added, this Highway 50 improvements, that the buyer would not be held responsible for improvements to Highway 50 beyond what's necessarily necessary to utilize the drainage uh, or the underpass for utilities and drainage. Very similar to what we had said on County Road 107 as well, that aside from the immediate improvements required to connect to the road um, on 107, they wouldn't be responsible for anything else. In Q, um, Fred and Larry requested that um, they not um, be obligated to construct any trail improvements within their subdivision uh, unless the ditch is abandoned. Um, and that, again, I think is their attempt to try and provide some impetus for the city to resolve uh, where is that? She's there. That's in Q. And we had that provision, that section was there. Um, 
that they would incentivize the mm -hmm. resolution with the ditch um, by eliminating a portion of the cost recovery, but this is an additional, um, I think, if I could put words in their mouth, an additional incentive for the city to um, work harder at resolving issues um, in Tennessee. Um, they are still committing to doing the trail on the balance of the property along the road and the trail connecting from 104 to the pedestrian bridge. Um, those were not part of this discussion. What happened to T? What was T? Earnest money. Oh, right. So um, we realized during the discussions that since there was not anticipated to be any cash at closing, that earnest money didn't really have a place. Um, and didn't necessarily make sense because there wouldn't be any money exchanged at closing, so we'd just be holding the money and giving it back. Mm -hmm. um, so we eliminated that and um, eliminated it in the contract as well and all the references to it. So what would a remedy be if they were in default? Specific performance then? What do you mean default on? Um, I mean, if we got through, got through everything and we had our 15 days to closing because the subdivision was approved and and then 15 days came when they didn't close. You wouldn't have any kind of property. Yes. Well, I'm just saying, we would spend time and money. As you know, they, they would help us, but they would hold us to specific performance. What would we be doing with them? Yeah. I think there's a lot of um, triggers in this agreement for both sides to meet specific Fourteen obligations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, not to mention there might be some in the new red lines that add yeah. on. Yeah, on sort of both sides. And yeah. if we did get to that point, they would have put a significant investment into the subdivision no, the in particular. In some ways, the thought was the $5,000 was sure. so uh, minuscule compared to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I thought that too. Maybe that should be more. But, so right. took an amount to but we, are, we are putting out money for an appraisal, mm -hmm. you know. Which would be probably around five thousand dollars. Which we need anyway. Yeah. Maybe not right this minute. Yeah. Um, they're putting out probably significantly more than that with the subdivision process, mm -hmm. with all the engineering design that has to go in. Yeah. So I don't know, um, but if that's a, something you guys feel strongly about. I'd like to ask one question. There's a lot here that we're getting mm -hmm. right now. You know, per our bylaws, we're supposed to have everything like two days by electronic prior. I mean, this is big stuff for us to be vote. I don't think us receiving this this morning, I think that violates the clause that we should have everything to look at two days prior. And I really think this hurts our voting on this today. So it's actually, it would be my recommendation that you schedule a special meeting. Yeah. yeah, this can't be voted on today until we get some time to... I, I, I agree. I think that's fair. Um, yeah. Push it out to Friday I would just say we push it out to our next meeting. I don't think that'll work so well. Two more weeks, you're saying? Not do a special meeting? They haven't agreed on this. I, I'm just I asking just, what you mean by that. I'm saying our next regular meeting. Because from my understanding, Michael, you're going to be meeting with Pete to fine tune some of this still? He does have, so yes, he does have this last draft and this is what we've, we've worked through. But, uh, but he does, he will come back to me and there could, there's the possibility he could have some, some so changes. So we still don't have the final draft. There still could be changes. So I would say to the don't. Belmont timing, I would try and schedule something for Friday or next Tuesday at the latest to try and. Yeah. I don't believe this ties to the Belmont. Uh, there's, and Dan has even told us with all the ones he's done the same that there's a way that the city can say those are on the Vanderveer land nearby and if successful the city will guarantee that those or even this organization can guarantee that they will be brought under the road. I don't think this organization actually has the wherewithal to do that make that obligation and the city council hasn't had that. But discussion. my point is the two really aren't connected. There are other ways of doing it for Belmont. There if, are. If the bylaws say we have to have two days, then, then I, we need uh, to do Is this on the agenda for tonight to be voted on by the city council? Yeah. Um, so I don't think there's an actual violation of the bylaws. The meeting was properly noticed and materials were distributed. 
no reason you can't update the materials. Right. I mean, we've all seen this contract. All we're doing is redlining and making some small changes, which well, doesn't seem insurmountable to me. Dara just suggested we that we reschedule the meeting, and I, 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 mean, I, I want some time to read this and go over. And I, I would agree, actually. I think it's important enough that everyone should feel comfortable that they've had time to review it. And I would recommend that you set a special meeting for later this week or very early Tuesday. next week and address it. I agree with that. I don't think we should wait two full weeks. Okay. I don't see the day. I don't gone. think that. You'll be gone? Yeah. Which day are you gone? I'm gone until next Wednesday. Starting when? How, how many people are starting? Is it four a quorum or five? Four. 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 <clears throat> how about we schedule? You can make it next Thursday? Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Everybody go with that? You can do that? Let me check. So that's a yes you can make it. <laughs> Next Thursday the twenty sixth at what eleven? Oh no, I can see when you make it. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, take, I'll, take, I'll, I'll take it I'll take it down another time. Uh, I think I can make it. I'll I'll do my best. I don't, I don't really want to go rafting on May twenty sixth. Personally, in Brown's Canyon. <laughs> 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 so this is a great excuse. I'll, yes, I'll be here. <laughs> so Thursday, May 26th at 11. Yep. Uh, that would also give us time to, to if there's any slight changes to Jared, you is that the, the so you'll last cancel day of yes, and is. there is a moving up ceremony? Up. Going on. We do have to fetch the kids at 11. Yeah. So we do it earlier? Do we have to do it at 11? I might have a conflict later because it's the last day of school and it gets out around oh, it is the last day of yeah. school. Well, our kids get out at 12.50, but yeah. my younger kid nine. gets out at Montessori, gets out yeah. even earlier. So. Can we do it at 10? Sure, I can do it at I mean, Yeah, I'm let's sure do it at 10. Nine. I, mean, I think 10 would be nine. better. Let's do nine is even better for nine, us. Let's we have nine. a housing roundtable meeting. Nine works for you guys, Jim? Yep. Ron? 10. No, how about nine? nine? We're saying nine. Cause nine? Yeah. <laughs> How about seven? Seven a.m. Everyone? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> okay, breakfast for everybody. <laughs> okay, so we're saying Thursday. Thursday, May twenty-sixth at nine a.m. And that should give Pete and Michael plenty of time to work through. Is that one for you guys? There's not stuff? very much more to work through. I don't think. My understanding. Well, we have to. So who made the red lights? lights? You or told me to send you a calendar. Uh, right? but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I have a conflict, but I'll cancel it, so it's okay. Um, so I think we are. May 26th. It would. Uh, I think we'll have to. We, I think that we can work that we can approve the Belmont um, option letter contingent on this being approved by the NRCDC, um, or we could schedule a special meeting of the council at the same. So you're, you're going to pull it off the agenda for tonight? I think no. I wouldn't recommend pulling it off of the agenda. I would absolutely want the council to go ahead and have discussion. So and they can see the deal, talk about it. For is this already in their box? Yeah. This, no. The, the, the new version the is The Belmont not. should be Literally changed. Just we just got to figure this one out. We've got the cost recoveries and everything built into the Belmont. I just want deal. them to be as up to speed as we are. Yeah, we'll get them the next stuff. For sure. Nine o'clock. Yeah. Nine o'clock Thursday, May twenty sixth. <laughs> Done deal. Okay. Um, so I guess in that spirit, are there any other specific questions that any of you have on this? Let's. I just had that one about the appraisal that it was the conflict. Um, so yep. I'm glad that got. And there are. Away. You'll see a few red lines in the contract. Nothing's itself. changed since our meeting yesterday, right? If those guys. Um, the things we talked about at the meeting. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, Pete and I have gone, re basically refined Refine our first yeah. I'm, I'm the no good. shot at it. Uh, okay. So I have two issues here, uh, H and K, which are kind of, well, I don't know what they are now, okay? So let's see if they're the same. What were the titles? K's cost recovery, H is verified. Okay, so they're the same in the new. Uh huh. So H, we say an independent engineer. Um, I would like to specify that that engineer be independent 
of the city of Salida and the NRCDC. Why? When I when I say independent, well, we were talking about this earlier, and I think uh, when Bob Grether was even in here, I would like it to be independent of the city of Salida and the NRCDC, so that we truly get independence on it. I mean, I think that's just suggesting that the professional engineering company is going to be biased and they're going to be, uh, and they're potentially corrupt. I, I, I don't, I mean, I don't even know the engineering company, but if I had that engineering company, I would be pissed. I guess um, my question is, logistically, who else is there locally that it doesn't do say that? It doesn't say it has to be local. I understand that, but um, I think a local person would have more, um, information about the costing for our area. Um, Who is the engineer that the city works with? Crabtree. Crabtree. So you're saying you don't want to use Crabtree. And you didn't use Crabtree because you thought we were going to use Crabtree. Yeah. No, right? just be too much of a conflict. But I mean, that's why yeah. you went to the San Luis Valley. That's so. correct. I say we stick with Crabtree. Yeah. Make it more expensive and less convenient. Use Crabtree. I have no problem with Crabtree. I guess I don't see how Crabtree's relationship with the city of Salida would be biased they, or would be working in the city's interest. Not to mention, let's give the work to locals. I think it could be assumed to be biased through, it could be construed as being biased. So, we have anything to say on this? Well, do they, does Crabtree consult with the city on other matters? And yes. So they review um, all sorts of development applications yeah. for us as well as plan doing design for so projects they would, for So would they be looking out for the city's best interest if they hold that role in other issues? Just, that would be a start, yeah. Hmm? That would be a start, I think, in my opinion. I don't have an issue with it then. I don't have an issue with Crutcher either. When is this estimate going to be done and how much of the engineering work is going to be done? <coughs> I'll say that again. When is the estimate going to be done, and how much of the engineering work will be done when the estimate is done? So, well, I'm really asking what quality estimate are we going to get? By the 25th, we're supposed to have the uh, under uh, the crossing drawing and, and planning and stuff for that. Then afterwards, we're all kind of waiting on this uh, appraisal. Is really probably the biggest. Well, the, 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 the estimate would then be a class one estimate, 50 to 100 percent definition of the project. Okay. So, okay. timing wise, we said 30 days prior to subdivision submission um, in the agreement, um, and thinking that because we require a pretty high level of detail for our subdivision applications, um, that that's what we would be looking at. I don't know. Yeah. And the appraisal doesn't come until within 45 days, so it's not near there. Well, 45 days after a mutual execution of contract, they have 180 days to finish the subdivision. I'm talking so about the appraisal. Yeah. The appraisal, the appraisal we should get. Cost yes. estimates, the class one cost estimate, which is the most accurate, is considered to be accurate within minus 10% plus 15%. Yeah. So if we have enough definition, they can do that. That's a good estimate. So are we asking the independent to do a class one estimate? Yeah. I, I would feel comfortable. Any, anything less than a class one is almost useless. Is class one design or class <laughs> one is estimate? Class one estimate. Estimate. Okay. That's, a, that's on the uh, American Society of Cost Estimating scale. So do you want to put that in here, the expectation? No, well, I'm just asking the question that if the engineering work is going to be done to the extent that they can do that class of an estimate, it's worth having the estimate done. If it is not to that quality, the estimate is not useful for our purposes. Okay. I would expect, um, I given what we require for our subdivision um, applications, yeah. Yeah. For, I think that's fair. Agree to add that to the independent survey as we have a class yeah, one. Class one. Class one. Yes. Yeah, well, we could do that. I would feel comfortable with anybody doing it if it stated that. 
Yeah. Okay. So that, that it must be done to a class one. Class one, one level. And that's uh, our society. I mean, I assume that's probably what they were planning on doing anyway. We don't know that, but we just we right. feel comfortable. I'm good with that. So you're saying as long you're okay with Crabtree as long as they do a class one. Yeah. Yes. ASCA. ASCE. Class one. That pretty standard, yeah. That's that's standard. For for what we're trying to do is verify the cost. But that's standard. Mm -hmm. it's, an, it's an industry standard. It's an one. industry standard class one. Right. And uh, it, if we don't get that level of accuracy, it's, it's actually a futile exercise. All right. So. <laughs> Fred, Larry, you guys go there. Makes sense. Okay. My second part is in K. Somewhere in K should also refer back to H that says the independent engineer will do all phases. So I think it should also refer to H somehow that the both the two are linked. That all phases will be independently. So if there's a sentence. Oh. At the end of it, right? It says yeah. the value of the subdivision improvements for each phase shall be determined under section H. Oh, okay. didn't see that. Didn't see that. Is that right? <coughs> well, it's actually, yeah. I'm, I'm going off the old one because it's was the right last sentence of, on, on the first paragraph of K. <coughs> yeah, it's the same. Okay, thanks. I missed that. I'm done. Uh, section I of the old, <laughs> sorry, what was the just title getting this. Um, determination of trade exchange value. Which one? Same. <clears throat> I just wanted to clarify at close to the end, it says seller shall have 20 days after the receipt of both the appraisal and verification of cost estimates provided by buyer. 20 days for what? This is period. Mm -hmm. To, to say that they're not okay with it? To say right. that they are. Where is this? <laughs> Sorry. It's third to it's last a, line. It's missing something there. Uh -huh. To respond. It's just a, I, mean, I think I get the intent of it, but it's a little incomplete. Yeah, and honestly, I would love a little bit of time to read through this carefully one more time because we were making changes pretty quickly yesterday. Um, so that would make me feel a little more comfortable. I think it just needs to be cleaned up. I think it's there. It's just not worded yeah. correctly. You know? so, yeah. <coughs> Michael, could you explain U and V in the new one to me? I mean, so V was actually is a removal. So what V, v was. was that V was the first version of U. It just showed up in the track changes. I don't see that in the one that's lined out. Yeah, so let's see here. It's just the right above V. Yeah, so U is the is the is the indemnification provision. And then V uh, was the original indemnification provision, but it's it's lined out. U was buyer's loan contingency before. That's not W. Yeah, I, I think what happened, Ron, is that Word just automatically gave it a new bullet point, and that bullet point should just be struck out. But which one was V? Because now you have So v. it created V. It bumped down buyer's loan contingency from V to W. So now, actually, in the uh, buyer's loan contingency is V, because that red line V that you see is, is see how it's red line is removed? Right. So it's just this, a bulleting system. So but it was yeah. also just added and then yes. removed. Right, so it was it was the first stab at you, the current you. <coughs> and then after okay. negotiating with Pete, we've we've changed it to. But it was not in our old one. Correct. It's right. Correct. Old one. right. So it was put in and taken out the same move. Right. Well, yeah, it was it was put in yesterday and taken out this morning. <laughs> and you is replacing it. Exactly. So yeah. everything else will move up to V. Right. One spot. One yeah. spot. Exactly. So we should still only have 
So then it two, we should have AA and BB. So okay. can you explain where we are in the indemnification, how this one isn't approved, but it may be? I mean, can you explain what so, so, so basically, uh, LCI has requested indemnification for um, if, if they for actions brought based on their subdivision improvements. I mean, we're not talking about uh, you know their own negligence, but you're talking about say citizens of Salida um, suing them, the company, them personally over the fact that one they they uh, entered this transaction at all or are are doing the improvements. And so uh, they've requested this indemnification, and we haven't even uh, gotten to rest tax on talking about what that's going to look like actually in a document. I mean, we've talked about the concept. So once this, this, uh, this uh, contract is executed, then we, we will talk about what we're actually looking at and what, what both parties are willing to accept, if anything. Um, so that's, the, I mean, that's why I say this is potentially a big sticking point where uh, if, if they don't get the identification they want, then they're going to walk. Um, but that's just part of the part of the deal. But so basically, this is sort of a placeholder saying, when you know this is what they they want, and we'll discuss it, and we have 30 days to figure it out, or the the deal terminates. Is this what they're asking for compared to what was in the old one? Is it? normal to what this agency or the city would allow? In my view, it protects LCI from nuisance lawsuits that the city might be involved with. Right. Mm -hmm. but I'm, with not, I'm, not speaking as, I'm not speaking as an attorney. Yeah. That's my opinion. So you can understand why what the worried. reason is. <laughs> 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 but you wrote the previous one, correct? Right. Um, we basically we yeah we, we uh, that was it was our initial discussion with uh, with Cordova, so we created that in our meeting yesterday, and basically refined it. So it basically says we have thirty days to approve. To come up with a, a plan. They're going to present it to us. No, we're going to we're, we're going to together. we're going to create it, and it's, okay. and and if it meets their criteria, and if we can negotiate it such that it meets their criteria, um, whether whoever drafts it, you know, whether we sit down together and draft it, or however it works. Okay. If if they don't agree to it, if they don't, it's not acceptable. They then they're going to back out. Okay. So we're agree we're approving it first, and then they have thirty days to well, tell it's, us. It's very similar to an appraisal. I mean, yeah. you're agreeing yeah. to something and then appraisal comes and if they don't like it, they can walk, you know, yeah. or inspection or, you know what I mean? It's just, right. yeah. Basically, it was, it's acknowledging that we're going to have to sit there and, and figure out the agreement and, and um, obviously there's going to be limits to what the NRCDC is willing to do and willing, limits to what Lowry is willing to take. So if those meet, then, then. So that will come back to this board to oh, yeah. discuss. Part of yeah. the reason and, and and the council. Council. May I get a copy of that contract? Things my name's in it. Um, I don't know that that's uh, appropriate yet. Well, it's still it's still a working contract. Oh, it's fine. We're gonna give it, it, it out okay? tonight. What's that? We're gonna give it out tonight. Too. We're gonna give it. Yeah, then no problem. Sure. I just don't want to overstep, you know, the process. I understand, but I appreciate that. Okay. Do you want the whole package or just the attachment? Um. So, you want the whole I noticed uh, in here it talks about legal opinion and legal paper about legal opinion. Are we anywhere on that about the whole going out to bid and all that? Mm -hmm. so yes. Yeah, we were going to talk about that in the executive session. Okay. Can we bring uh, Tim and Bob back then? Um, I, so I would suggest that we actually have a motion to um, set the special meeting for Thursday. The 26th at 9 a.m. to um, continue consideration of this resolution. You want to make the motion? Somebody? I make a motion that we do what? Do that. <laughs> that we do that. <laughs> that we do that, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like to. one of my motions. <laughs> well, there's a lot of thoughts swirling in my head. Motion to um, set the special meeting and continue the consideration okay. of this resolution. I make a motion that we set a special meeting. Uh, on Thursday, May 26 at 9 a.m. here in Council Chambers, um, to uh, to review the contract and approve it. Or 
for now. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, passes. Ron, I will, um, should I give the comments? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send an email out with the appointment for everybody, but if you talk to Dan, can you specifically talk to Dan. mention that to him? Thank you. Can we get those modifications as early as possible? Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Is Thursday, as well as that, are we able uh, to vote on Thursday? Agreement would be kind of whatever yeah, you come yeah, up with. Well, I know mean, you might not have that right away. But. Yeah, and, and they, I mean, I would anticipate that's not going to be even worked on until we enter this. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Gloria. Yeah. 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 What's your copy? You're allowed to have a copy, I think. Copy it. <laughs> Just can't read it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So, subdivision of lot 15. No, no, no Belmont. Where am I? Oops. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Belmont option letter. Go down, step it up. So, so we, we uh, before the board today is the uh, option to purchase um, from Belmont, they're the developer we've been working with for the affordable housing. It's for five acres. Um, basically, uh, they've come in, their proposal is 175000 which would be $35,000 an acre. Uh, we came to some agreement um, around the cost recovery that's been added in there. It is a little soft in the language in case we needed to revisit that a little bit, we can. Um, and basically this puts, puts um, the property in their control until July of 2017. If they were close but not quite, they would want to go ahead and make another run at the tax credits next year. And that's why the, the length of um, the option is as it is. Um, and then they would just execute um, a continuation of that um, at the end of next year. That's really kind of the meat of it. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you've got. Um, I do think um, Jim and I went back and forth a little bit on this um, in trying to get our heads around what the cost recovery will look like and um, what should be included in that. And I think that's a larger discussion at the board needs to have um, at some point, which is why this in what's included in here is an estimate. Estimated cost. Estimated cost um, recovery, just not having a, a very a solid, solid direction. Well, what do they need from us right now? Do they need a vote? They need this option letter. They need this option letter. That gives them the site control that they need mm -hmm. and the expectation that the utilities will be there with them participating in the cost recovery. Do you make a motion to that fact? Uh, I have a couple of questions on the, the uh, option, and then on the on the conditions. That kind of lists conditions that have to happen in order for this agreement to be valid, correct? So, would this require approval from the city council? We should put that as a condition, should we not? It's on their agenda for this evening. Okay. Um, so you, the city council has to um, approve any action like this, regardless. I mean, you don't have the yeah. authority to. I think it's number five of the conditions. It says this agreement is conditioned upon the buyer receiving a serious support from the city and local government official officials. Well, I kind of read that in a little different fashion. I kind of read that to mean that they would get support from staff and things like that, not necessarily uh -huh. an actual approval. Uh, but if you think it's okay, I'm, I'm okay with it. I think so, given that it's on the agenda tonight in the okay. city council. And then the other, it would probably require a release from the bank as well. So we probably yes. should put that as a condition as well. You're in alpha. Is that correct? I have six. 
Oh, I see. Conditions. Yep. Yeah. Uh, conditions is L, and then there's six conditions. So it would be condition seven. Yeah. That, those are the only comments I have. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. I. The screaming says that they need gas and they need electric, mm -hmm. which we don't have to the property. So our um, understanding from Atmos is that there is capacity to serve this development um, with the line, with the current line that's coming through um, to Paradise Acres. And electric um, will be pulled by Lowry. Down 104. But we don't, we don't have anything in writing stating that those will happen, guaranteed that those will happen, though. If they're not a part, the gas isn't a part of the Lowry contract, the, right. so there's nothing. Right, we believe the gas is already there. It's already there to capacity to serve this development. Where? It's to a line that goes, so it basically comes straight south off of Highway 50. And then it aligns basically just a straight shot up the road to Paradise Acres. So who there's an existing assumes that cost to Belmont would tap into that at their cost. Yeah. My only other comment. Yeah, there, um, Ron, you can see that little sliver. There's a, it's about that. a 15 foot. Um, the, the city actually has control of that 15 feet. Okay. And that's where that line comes up to Paradise Acres. It stops right there? Nope, goes it goes all the way on up to Paradise Acres and serves the, okay. uh, the mobile home park so there. The Belmont's aware that they would have to pull it from Yeah, there. so they would tap in and pull it there, and that would be on part of their development cost. My only problem with this agreement is the 18 months. I feel that ties our hands. If Say Belmont, if we were to do this as a six month, they will have their answer for phase one by them. And of course, we're going to renew. If they renew, we're going to renew with them for next year. But if we give them an 18 month, say something big comes in that we just can't. I mean, I think it ties our hands for 18 months. I'd rather see this be six months. They'll have their answer by the end of the year. And next year, if they're going to apply again and give them another one. Because right now, as I understand it, the money for this uh, tax credit is, it terminates at the end of 16, 2016 and has not been renewed further at this I time. I believe it actually has been renewed through 2019. When was that done? Uh, it had to be done last week or so. Yeah, actually it's been about the last in seven to 10 session. days. Yeah, just at the okay. end of the last session. I believe it was they got another 50 million, and then they're going to be allocating that 17, 18, and 19. I was unaware that that recently passed, but yeah. So they do have the money available. And it, I sure would feel more comfortable if we went six months, and then if they're going to apply in 17, we give them another one instead of just tying it up for 18 months. Yeah, but I guess, Ronnie, what's the guarantee to them if this thing comes along? You're talking about that that it would get renewed for that. We would move them to a different piece. Probably. Well, I mean, I, I guess my feeling is. I think it's such an important priority for the town. I mean, we've heard it from so many different sources, from our meetings, public meetings, and so forth. But I can't, at this point at least, imagine anything big that would come along that would be more important to the town at this point. And that's just my opinion, particularly because we're only talking about five acres here. I mean, if there's something that big, there's a lot of land left for that. So I guess I'd, my feeling is I, I want to do whatever it takes to motivate them to get the, keep going on this thing. And if there's any question in their mind that we're only giving them six months and we will or will maybe, maybe not, and you know, renew them, I'd just be concerned that they might just bail on us. Bob, this is per a specific site. So if something well, changes, we, yeah. we can't change it. If I could just interject a little bit, you know, kind of some color into it as well. It's fairly standard for these projects. I mean, Dan Tibbetts has brought it up a couple of times where oftentimes you make one, you know, the a first application, you might have a, a thing or two that you need to tweak, so you make a second application. Um, projects do get approved on first application. We think this one is ripe for that approval. Um, they're making a significant investment on their side, and it's dollars that are not coming out of anybody's pockets but their own. So it's fairly standard to go ahead and give them those two bites at the apple. Um, and I think that that, I think it would be. It, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be standard operating to only give them one op, one opportunity at it. Just knowing how the um, the tax credit process works, 
and that they, you know, that they get the option to do that twice. And honestly, I don't know if we put that on them if they would walk or not. I mean, that's a significant risk for them. We we can't take that risk in my mind. Yeah. But I think you know, we, we've spoken a lot about fiduciary responsibility. You know, we also, you know, sometimes forget to speak about the social responsibility, mm -hmm. and it's the number one priority is affordable housing and. I think we need to do whatever it takes to make that happen. One last question. We have 14 or 15 outs of the Lowry as it stands right now. We have now. what now? We have 14 or 15 outs on the Lowry contract right now. If we say this contract, this agreement is contingent on the Lowry and it terminates, are we misleading uh, Belmont and the application at that point. Well, I don't think so. I mean, we're all going into this with the best of intentions um, and, and have been for, we have significant amount of money tied up into it. So is Lowry. I don't think there's any. I, guess I would say we've been very forthcoming with Belmont and, and they were here um, during and, and stayed for your the discussion with, yeah. Lowry. with yeah. They're aware. Fred and Larry. They're You're missing my point. If yeah. the application is made, and states that this contract's part, you know, this is doing it, and this contract disappears. And the Belmont contract disappears? No, no, no Belmont is already applied, contingent on this, and this mm -hmm. terminates. Mm -hmm. Then that application is not true and forthcoming. Correct, to. and I, I think you make that aware, I make Chapa aware of that immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, the conditions change. Hence the reason we're trying to and certainly, yeah, if they didn't get it this year, they would still have the land tied up. And if the board wanted to pay for the, you know, the there's city, a lot of things that have to come together. Yeah, if the city wanted to pony up and do you know, some other model for that, and then we would still have them. If it was approved, you're saying? Yeah. If they're technical. <coughs> okay. Does anybody want to make a motion? Bob? I'll move that we approve. Do I have to read something here? Um, it's a resolution. Fragmented motion. Just if you said that. What did they say? Here, Bob. Recommended motion. Okay. All right. There you go. Right there. Uh, I make a motion that a board member person should make a motion to approve resolution 2016 05, a resolution of the Salida Natural Resource Center Development Corporation. Colorado Nonprofit Corporation authorizing an option to purchase letter for five acres of Track 15 Vanderbilt Master Plan with Belmont Company. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm opposed. Unopposed. the Belmont um, lot, uh, assuming that everything is in progress with Lowry, um, is the board interested in, at that time, tacking on to the subdivision that Lowry will be doing um, to also create the five acres of Track 15? Um, right now, Track 15 is a bit bigger than what Belmont actually <coughs> wants to purchase. Do they want to? <coughs> Does he want to? Lowry. We haven't talked to them about that. It would be you um, paying that cost difference, basically, I think would be the, the proposal. So okay. that the so subdivision would flow through as one Would it be less expensive to do it at this time rather than the two, two separate? Mm -hmm. Be cheaper and would reduce the time and yeah, just incorporate the one to one subdivision. I think at this time it's just um, for discussion. I think we would come back once we get a little farther down the road on. Um, both of these deals for definite direction, but at some point, um, the track 15 actually does need to be subdivided. And, and it would be some of the downsides that perhaps this didn't go through, and right. we'd be yeah. sitting there with the five acres of the added lot that we wouldn't know what to do with, perhaps. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I think you need to wait for it to get approved before you make a property out of it. Okay. No. Track, track 15, you will. Is listed as four acres. Yeah, I think it's actually a little bit of it's a little bit of sixteen. Yeah, we we just hadn't yeah. adjusted the line on the map, but 
they would be get, grabbing a little bit of lot 16, basically right. to up to the easement that's shown on that map. This doesn't change our application right now. Yeah. No. No. Just for discussion, that ultimately yeah. we'll have to do that. I think process. if and when they get it, Proceed. we subdivide it. Yeah, I think we're fine either way. Just that one would be more efficient and less yeah. expensive. But ahead of the cart, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Well, have some time. Well, let's bring it up again before it and give us some t time to uh, at least think well, about it. Kind of having pros and cons next to each other be useful. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then next, um, we had said that once we were under contract with Lowry, um, which we're not obviously yet, but probably ready to about to start um, talking about how you want to market um, the balance of the property. The discussion several months ago was that once you were under contract with Lowry, there would be some sort of public process established to accept proposals from <coughs> other potential buyers or developers on the balance of the property. So I wanted to just initiate that conversation again with the board and get you guys thinking about how you want to approach that. Can get some direction on? Well, I think first and foremost, we should market to you know, locals, all local developers. I think we need the appraisal. <coughs> which we're going to be getting before we can really market. I, mean, I guess that yeah. I don't disagree that having the appraisal will be very useful and informative. For appraisal. Um, are you going to stick a sign out there and say, here's how much it costs? Or are you going to be looking for proposals? Or you know, how does affordable housing fit into that? So, you know, uh, sort of all the different community-minded factors that you've, you've had as well. Um, you have that Montessori school out there um, that's interested, you know, in, in a particular area, so. Well, I think it's a seller's market right now, so you want to do proposals. That way you can try and make them fit what you'd like to see out there, you know, affordable housing, apartments, condos, townhomes, single family, whatever, deed restrictions, all those things. So we have this great opportunity because, you know, land is you know, selling so, so well here right now that we can, we can make it work to the comp plan and to what people have desired through the meetings. Well, I think one thing, too, is that um, I think any appraisal is going to be site-specific, size-specific, everything else. And I'm thinking that maybe, you know, we, we just need to let, I mean, we've got a basic schematic master plan for this thing. And it seems to me we put it out there that we're interested in proposals on that based on the direction we want to see. And if somebody comes in and says, well, I want half of this parcel and half of that parcel, and I'm going to do the following, at that point, it seems to me that if we're interested in pursuing it, at that point we appraise that piece. that piece itself on its own merits, and then come to an agreement one way or the other on whether we want to proceed. But I think that's a much more value than if we if we just go in there and appraise this piece and this piece. Who knows what combination somebody's going to come in with anyway? So I think we should wait until we actually have. But I think we do need to put it out there that we're we're entertaining proposals that are in line with the direction we're trying to go here. I mean, once, once we get all of this, yeah, once we have this other stuff in, in line, I think it would be easy enough to write a request for proposal and right. send that out. I mean, that's right. well within our abilities to do. But, but and just continue to encourage that we've got a really good master plan and we should be basing our decisions on that master right. plan. And an appraisal, really, to do one today is going to have very little to do with what it should be a year from now when things are moving along and think the market changes and who knows what the influence of having all this stuff on the table is going to do anyway. I think we need to wait. So we do need to develop a formula for the cost recovery portion mm -hmm. of the price. Right. That, that takes into account what benefit a particular parcel has mm -hmm. from the utilities that LCI will put in. Yeah, we could do that as a next step. We could even assign a range to each tract and then, mm -hmm. you know, have that incorporated out as part of the RFP so that information's in there. Yeah, I've made a cut of that, but it needs yeah. to be done by the group, not right. me. <laughs> I trust you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I understand. But how does an interested party know if they want to put a proposal in if they don't have any idea what the land cost is? Well, once we get infrastructure, I think we can start coming up with a pretty good range. And that's sort of what we started with, you know, with all of these things, is we put the range in there, and, you know, with Belmont, it came pretty much spot on. 
I think um, the appraisals that will be done for the bank for the LCI project um, will include both. There'll basically, be two um, values assigned: one as the sort of condition it's in today, and then one for the bank, looking at once the improvements are extended across the highway. So we'll have some idea of what that is, and it'll be up to the board whether or not you want to make that appraisal public. So there's a an idea out there of what the cost would be, but it will ultimately, you know, be part of any proposal or negotiation if somebody's wanting to include affordable housing, or do you want to require that a certain percentage of units be Absolutely. affordable um, to certain income ranges, and, and make that part of a requirement of any proposal? Is so yeah. up to you guys. I think that people would want an expectation of. Of density, I think there's some of that in the master plan. But how flexible um, are you willing to be on things like that? I think you know this isn't going to be a RFP, black and white, lowest bid wins sort of thing. I would expect that you're going to have some some conversation and negotiation mm -hmm. with um, with people. If you have the highest bid wins, <laughs> so. oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, another way to approach it would be to say, okay, we're looking. So we've got Belmont in place. We've got the Lowry piece. The next logical tract would be. You know, just working from east to west across the property and put them up for RFP um, track by track and try to get the best deal that way. I mean, there's a couple of different ways you can structure it to where it's a little, you know, so somebody doesn't grab a piece over here and somebody get a piece over here. You could put those up through time and phases. And remember that the best deal is not necessarily the best amount of money. I agree. You know, yeah. it's, 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 other it's what is being, it's how the community being density served. density and product type and, yeah, I agree. Well, I think we have to wait until this other deal is closed. Right. Yeah, and I don't think right. we're not looking for directors to go out and start drafting anything today. We just want to initiate that conversation. conversation. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But there are a lot of factors. To by it. the same token, though, I think you know, for a formal approach to the market, that's what that makes sense. But I think we're we're always open to somebody coming along and saying, "Hey, you know, I'm interested in this," and then we have to evaluate. Yeah. Well, we sort of said we're not interested until after we get the Lowry deal done. So we we. Put everybody, bunch of people on hold. Well, all I'm saying though is now, there's no, no reason why somebody can't point. express interest. I mean, we don't have to commit to anything until we've gotten to that point. But I think I don't want the public to think that we're, you know, sure. we're not open to that. So, five, I think we got taken care of already. Unscheduled items. Are we going into executive session? Yeah. I have something for unscheduled items. Perfect. Uh, I have moved, so I am no longer in the city limits. I am just outside the city limits, so I'm supposed to disclose that. There you go. There you go. I don't know if you need my new address, but. You could throw a rocket at the city. <laughs> I could. I border the city, but I'm actually technically in the county. I would just stand next to It's a cool you land stay on the board. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well. Just want to make sure it's everyone's clear on that. All right, where's that stuff to read? For Forgot it. Um, someone just needs to make a motion to go into the executive session for the purpose on the agenda. I have a motion to go into the executive session for the purpose of determining positions relative to matters that may be subject to negotiations, developing strategy for negotiations, and or instructing negotiators under CRS section 246.02.4E and the following additional details provided for identification to discuss negotiations for the possible disposition of development opportunities. Ready? Right. So uh, as part of this deal, um, uh, LCI was looking for an opinion on the, the, the no bid um, nature of this deal. Um, and, and in reality, this is sort of a, a broader issue than just the Lowry deal. I mean, this is what is NRCDC and why does it exist? Um, so this is limited to just that question. but. You know, essentially, when I look at it as, from a legal standpoint, you look at 
a, the NRCDC is a Colorado nonprofit corporation, and that was established that way for a reason.
No, we're looking for a direction. Um, from, well, we have to say that we are out of all that stuff that was in the folder. Not have to. <laughs> um, no, we're looking for a direction um, from the board uh, following the discussion in executive session on whether or not to release the opinion from your legal counsel. Tim, you were going to I think you want to make a motion. Well, I would, I, you know, we had the discussion and certainly um, I don't know if it's a consensus on the board or not, but I think it would be appropriate to release the letter to the uh, city that Michael has prepared for us on this issue. Anybody? Is there a second on this? I'll, I'll make a motion up to it. Do we need a motion? Did you make a motion to it? Okay. Is there a second on that? I'll second it. On discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you.